The sight of these piggy banks would bring back a lot of fond memories where in our childhood we were always told that if you put in money into a piggy bank, it will grow. So let's look at these two cases. There are two piggy banks and there are these two people. This piggy bank belongs to a person A where the person A has put in one rupee into the piggy bank to start with and this piggy bank belongs to another person B where this person B has put in 500 rupees into this piggy bank. Now what these two people do is that person A on a daily basis will put in enough money to double the money in the piggy bank. So right now there is one rupee in the piggy bank and this person on day one now will put in one rupee so that the money becomes double which means it becomes two and on the second day will put in enough money so that the money becomes equivalent to four and on the third day it will become eight and so on. So person A in his piggy bank will double the money every day and person B in his piggy bank will put in 50 rupees every day. They do this over a 10 day period and then at the end of the 10 day period they compare the money that exists in their piggy banks. Who do you think has more money at the end of 10 days? Person A or Person B? This is our topic, this is our session on interest and we'll go through a few concepts of interest and then see whether Person A has more money or Person B has more money at the end of the 10 day period. What is interest? Interest basically means the extra money that you would either earn or you may have to pay depending on whether you have invested money or you have borrowed money. So interest in very simple terms can be explained as the extra money. Now there are two kinds of interest that we will consider. The first is what is known as simple interest and the second is what is known as compound interest. Now the basic difference between the two is that in simple interest the principle does not change which means the initial money that is either invested or borrowed it does not change over the entire time duration whereas in case of compound interest the principle which is the initial money keeps changing because the interest regularly is added back to the principle and hence the principle keeps changing. So the basic difference between simple interest and compound interest is that in simple interest the principle remains the same for the entire time duration whereas in compound interest the principle changes regularly because the interest is added back. Now let's look at a few formulae. When we look at a formula for simple interest the formula is PNR upon 100 where P refers to the principal which is the initial money N refers to the number of years which is basically in terms of the time period and R refers to the rate of interest which is expressed in terms of percent per annum. So when we use this formula we actually calculate the value for the simple interest. But now if we want to hence calculate with the interest what is the amount then the formula for amount would be the initial principal plus the simple interest which would mean principal plus PNR upon 100 which is the formula for simple interest and hence amount can be expressed as P into 1 plus NR upon 100. P is the initial amount which is the principal. SI is the simple interest which is either earned or that needs to be paid and amount is the final value that a person will earn or will have to pay including the principal and the simple interest. These are the formulae that we need to use for a simple interest situation. If we now move on to the compound interest situation where we've already discussed that the phenomenon of compounding means that the principal keeps changing. Now if we have to look at the formulae, the formula that we write is directly for amount which is given as P into 1 plus R upon 100 the whole raised to N. Once again P stands for the principal, R stands for the rate of interest percent per annum 
and n we cannot call n as the number of years anymore we will have to refer to n as the number of time periods now why are we saying this let's look at a principle of 1000 rupees and let's look at a rate of interest of 10% and suppose we use what is known as annual compounding which means interest is calculated at the end of the year and we want to find the amount in such a case at the end of 2 years then the value of amount would be 1000 into 1 plus 10 upon 100 the whole square because there are 2 years where compounding is done at the end of every year on the other hand if instead of compounding being done at the end of every year if compounding was to be done at the end of every 6 months which is also referred to as half yearly compounding then my interest would be calculated every 6 months and hence if I now want to find the amount it would be 1000 into 1 plus it would be 5 upon 100 because interest is calculated every 6 months the rate was 10% for the full year so it would be considered as 5% for half a year and now when I consider n which is the number of time periods in 2 years there are 4 6 year time periods 6 months sorry time periods and hence the value of amount would be calculated as 1000 into 1 plus 5 upon 100 raised to 4 just to repeat R is considered as 5% because we need to calculate R for 6 months and N is taken as 4 because in 2 years there are 4 half year time periods and since we were to calculate the amount at the end of 2 years N is considered as 4. This is the reason why N should never be referred to as the number of years in a compounding situation. We should always refer to N as the number of time periods. So this is the formula for amount in a compounding scenario. And if we want to calculate the value of compound interest, then we will need to do that as amount minus the principal. Now this is the formula to calculate the amount. But if we understand the compounding situation, if we look at this example of annual compounding, the principal was 1000, which increased by 10% at the end of one year, followed by another increase of 10% in the second year. So if we now go back to our concepts of percentages, this is nothing but an example of successive percentage changes. And hence, another way of solving Every compound interest question is by using the formula of successive percentage changes. So what we can do here is we can say there are two successive changes of 10% and if we make use of our successive percentage change formula which was A plus B plus AB upon 100 as a percentage we would get 10 plus 10 plus 1 and hence this kind of a compounding phenomenon would mean a 21% increase over a 2 year interval so we can find out 21% of 1000 which will directly give us the compound interest and if we add that to the principle of 1000 we would get the amount so another way of solving every compound interest question is by making use of the successive percentage changes formula let's try and understand how to find out or how to use the difference between compound interest and simple interest in the first two years we've already looked at a particular table and we built the table where we've said if the principal is thousand rupees and the rate of interest is 10 percent per annum and if we calculate the compound interest and simple interest in the first year it happens to be the same simple interest in the first year was 100 compound interest in the first year also was 100 when we moved on to the second year we saw that the simple interest was still 100 but the compound interest was 110 so this is where the difference between compound interest and simple interest comes up in the first two years now why is there a difference between the compound interest and the simple interest in the second year the difference comes up because 
we add the interest of the first year to the principal and hence in the second year we earn an additional interest on the first year's interest. So if we want to find out the difference between compound interest and simple interest in the first two years the difference is be due to interest on the first year's interest. Now how do we calculate the first year's interest? It is simply R percent of the principal. And if we want to find an interest on this, we will again consider R percent of this. And hence this can be used as a very simple formula. Wherever you have difference between compound interest and simple interest in the first two years. Mind you, this formula can be used only when you are looking at the difference between CI and SI in the first two years and this formula is interest on the first year's interest. This is how we calculate the first year's interest and we calculate interest on that and this becomes equal to the difference. Now in problems it is possible that this difference is given and the rate is given and the principle is asked or whichever way. Out of these three parameters, if any two are given, the third can be calculated. Now, I have already mentioned that this formula can be used only if the problem talks about difference in the first two years. But there are times when the problem would talk about difference in the first three years. And if we have to build on the formula, it becomes a little more complicated. So, let's try and understand another way of solving the same question for two years. If I look at simple interest, since the principle does not change, if the rate is 10% per annum, then over two years, the simple interest return would be 20%. Whereas in compounding, since we have already seen that it is an application of successive percentage changes, which means a 10% increase successively over two years, the return in compound interest would be 10 plus 10 plus 1 which means a 21% return. So if we look at it at the end of 2 years in percentage terms, the difference between CI and SI in the first 2 years in percentage terms is 1%. If that 1% is quantified in terms of a value, if the difference value is given to us and then if the principle is asked then we can straight away say that if 1% is equal to whatever is the value given then 100% would be how much and that will give us the value of the principle. Now if this can be used for the first two years we can simply extend this using the concept of successive percentage changes for three years and accordingly calculate. So if it was for three years, then this would have become 30%. This would have become 33.1%. And then we would say if 3.1% is equal to the difference, 100% is how much? So to summarize, if the problem talks about the difference between CI and SI in the first two years, we can very easily use this formula, which is interest on the first year's interest but if it is more than three, two years, then we need to use the concept of successive percentage changes, calculate the simple interest return in percentage terms, compound interest return in percentage terms, and then using this concept, find out the percentage difference and equate it with the value of the difference given to us. Let's move on to a new concept, which is the difference between the compound interest in any two successive years. Let's understand something very basic. Compound interest in the first year would be calculated as R percent of the principal. Now we've already discussed the basic concept of compound interest which means that the interest which is calculated in the first year or the first time period gets added back to the principal and the second time period interest is calculated on the new principal and hence Compound interest in year 2 would actually be the first year's compound interest 
प्लस आर परसेंट ऑफ द फर्स्ट इयर्स कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट दिस इज बिकॉज इन द सेकेंड ईयर यू नॉट ओनली अर्न इक्विवेलेंट ऑफ वॉट वॉज अर्न इन द फर्स्ट ईयर बट यू ऑल्सो अर्न इंटरेस्ट ऑन द फर्स्ट ईयर्स इंटरेस्ट बिकॉज दैट वॉज एडेड बैक टू द प्रिंसिपल एंड हेन्स इफ वी नाउ रीअरेंज द टर्म्स वी गेट कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट ऑफ इयर टू माइनस कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट ऑफ इयर वन इज इक्वल टू आर परसेंट ऑफ कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट ऑफ इयर वन एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू जनरलाइज दिस देन कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट इन एनी इयर एन माइनस कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट इन द प्रीवियस इयर एन माइनस वन वुड एक्चुअली बी आर परसेंट ऑफ द कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द प्रीवियस इयर and hence we can say that the difference between compound interest in any two successive years is r percent of the compound interest of the previous year so there are two important points that we've learned here one is difference between compound interest in any two successive years is r percent of the compound interest of the previous year and compound interest in any year is r percent more than the compound interest of the previous year which we studied here when we looked at compound interest of year 2 let's now look at these cases where a sum of money invested becomes an integral number of times a certain number of times in a few years let's take an example where a sum of money kept at simple interest becomes four times in Seven years. So we've been given that there is a certain principle which becomes four times in seven years. And suppose you want to find out in how many years will it become twenty-eight times. The question is for it to become twenty-eight times, how many years are required? Now, when we look at this example, if I say the principle is p, then the amount becomes. Four times p in seven years. This is given to us. If the amount has become four times the principal, it means that the simple interest has become three times the principal in seven years. Because we've already looked at a formula that amount is equal to principal plus simple interest. So simple interest becomes three times the principal in seven years, and you want the amount to become twenty-eight times. which would mean that you want the simple interest to become 27 times the principal now if simple interest becomes 3 times the principal in 7 years then it will become 27 times the principal in 63 years simply because if this gets multiplied 9 times then this should also be multiplied by 9 and hence in such a case we see that the simple interest sorry the amount Will become twenty-eight times the principal in sixty-three years. Now, this is one way the example can be asked. So, the question can be asked. Another question that can be asked is: In such a situation where a sum of money becomes four times in seven years, how much is the rate of interest? We would again go back to this statement where we say: If the sum of money has become four times in seven years. then the simple interest has become 3 times the principal in 7 years and if we use the formula of simple interest which is p and r upon 100 we would say 3p is equal to p and r upon 100 where n can actually be replaced as 7 because we've been told it happens in 7 years and now p cancels off and there is only one unknown r which can very easily be calculated so there are two kinds of examples which can be asked on this one single concept which is a sum of money at simple interest becomes four times in seven years so how much is the rate of interest or for it to become 28 times how many years are required we've already seen an example of a sum of money becoming four times in seven years in a simple interest situation now let's see what happens if it's a compound interest situation So if we say in a compound interest situation a sum of money becomes 4 times in 7 years 
so it would become 64 times in how many years is the question asked the way we would approach this question now is if suppose the sum of money was rupees 100 then what we are saying is after 7 years this amount would become 400 now the concept of compounding is that the new change will be applicable on this new amount and hence we now start with 400 and we say that this 400 in another 7 years would become 4 times which would make it 1600 and now that 1600 in another 7 years would become 4 times which means 6400 so if we compare these two amounts we see that this is 64 times the initial amount and which has happened in these 3 intervals of 7 years each which means in 21 years the sum of money which was placed at compound interest has become 64 times so this is the way we would tackle a question involving a compound interest scenario having studied the concepts of interest and we've already looked at simple interest and compound interest let's go back to our example of the piggy banks we had looked at a person a and a piggy bank a where the person started with one rupee and then this person kept doubling the money every day for 10 days let's now try and look at this example as a principle of one rupee and there is an effect of doubling every year and this goes on for 10 years on the other hand there was another person b with his piggy bank having 500 rupees and this person was adding 50 rupees every day for 10 days so once again if we take an annual concept let's say he has 500 rupees and he is adding 50 rupees every year for 10 years now piggy bank b can be considered as an example of simple interest because the principle remains the same and there is just an increase of 10 percent every year for 10 years so now in this case where there is a simple interest applicable for piggy bank b if i want to find the amount at the end of 10 years then it would be principal which was 500 into 1 plus n r upon 100 where n was 10 years and r was 10 percent and hence this amount would become 1000 rupees let's take the case of piggy bank a which happens to be a compounding phenomenon because when we looked at doubling every year there was actually an increase of 100% every year and the new change was applicable on the final new amount every time and hence if we use our formula in this case principal was 1 rupee p into 1 plus r upon 100 rate of interest was 100% and raised to 10 because there were 10 time periods and hence this would become 2 raised to 10 which is 1024 so effectively we find that the person who has piggy bank A ends up with more money and this also proves that compounding is a very very powerful concept and we should never get carried away by the initial uh, amount that has been put in which in this case was only 1 rupee whereas here it was 500 rupees but the powerful concept of compounding actually means that person A ends up with much more money as compared to not much more but still more money as compared to person B.